Welcome back to another episode of Quantum Computing. In this episode, I want to talk about complex numbers, which plays an important role in quantum mechanics and quantum computation. Complex numbers consist of two parts, real part and imaginary part. part. And I is imaginary unit, which means that I square is equal to minus one, and it's back to the root of history of mathematics that people try to find the root of the equation x2 plus 1 equal to 0. And uh, if we try to solve it with classical approach, we have seen that the root of this equation is uh, square root of minus 1. But uh, square root of minus 1 is not a real number. So we have to extend the set of real numbers to a complex number by this notation. So real and imaginary part of the complex numbers are real numbers. So for example, 2 plus 3i is uh, a real uh, and imaginary part of the, uh, this complex number. So 2 is a real, real part and 3 is imaginary part. And you, you can see that uh, real and imaginary part of a complex number uh, is uh, a real number, are, are real numbers. But there is a one to one correspondence between uh, complex numbers and the vector in, in a plane. So, for example, if I mm, have a complex number like 2 plus 3i, I can represent this uh, complex number by a vector in, in a plane. So, the vector z uh, corresponds to 2 plus 3i because I can represent 2 plus 3i by a tuple of 2 and 3, which is a vector in, in a plane. And this helps us to understand uh, the set of complex numbers. But we could do uh, addition, uh, subtraction, multiplication, and division on, on complex numbers. So uh, we want to uh, turn the set of uh, complex number as, as a field, as a set of, uh, as a field that is similar to other uh, numerical system but i will show you simple examples here that for example 2 plus 3i can be added to 3 plus 5i and i can add real part together and imaginary part also together we could also uh, multiply two complex numbers and uh, we multiply component by component so the result here is uh, 6 minus 8i this one plus 9i and here minus 12 i square, but we know that i square is equal to minus 1. So the real part is 6 plus 12, and the imaginary part is just uh, 9i min minus 8i. So the result is 18 plus i. But I skipped the division part, but for division, the only things you need to do is that. If, for example, uh, uh, if I divide 2 plus 3i by 3 minus 4i, I only need to multiply this uh, by 3 plus 4i by 3 plus 4i. And uh, if I simplify the result, uh, the result is again another complex number. But we could also define a uh, uh, complex conjugate of a complex number, uh, which is important, especially in quantum mechanics. So, so if uh, Z is a complex number, then Z star, which is X minus I1, is complex conjugate of z and also we could define a uh, magnitude of z by 
square root of x2 plus phi2. So we define the set of complex numbers as x plus i y such that x and y belongs to uh, sorry belongs to uh, real numbers and uh, this is a very important definition because the component of uh, complex numbers are uh, real numbers so somehow we could say that complex numbers are two-dimensional numbers it, it is because we have two real numbers uh, for representing a complex number we have uh, we could also have polar representation of uh, uh, complex numbers because we have seen that uh, we could represent a complex number by a vector in a plane so x plus i y which here x is a uh, x and y as are the length of this uh, triangle then i can also uh, represent this uh, vector by uh, by the angle from the x uh, coordinate and also the distance from the origin and uh, we could have polar coordinate as r and theta and also I could have Cartesian coordinate as x and y and we could uh, uh, transform Cartesian product to polar coordinate by uh, basic um, geometry and you and and you use you know uh, basic algebra we could see that x is equal to r cosine of theta and y is equal to r sine of theta and if you write the definition of uh, sine and cosine in this triangle you can see this uh, definition and uh, also we could uh, do the vice versa and say r is equal square root of x plus uh, square root of x2 plus y2 and tangent value of theta also is equal to y over x so easily we could uh, uh, transform one system to another system Another interesting thing here is the Euler formula. Euler's formula says e to the i theta is equal to cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. And we could use Euler formula to uh, obtain polar, a uh, compact uh, representation polar representation of complex numbers so if for example i multiply this formula by r we have r e i i theta equal to r cosine of theta plus i r sine of theta so but we know we know that r cosine of theta is equal to x and r sine of theta equal to y so we have uh, x plus i y which is equal to z so we represent z not only as uh, x plus y i y but also as r e to i theta which r is a this uh, the length of the vector and theta is a angle from the x uh, direction and uh, this this compact uh, representation by polar coordinate is useful when we deal with uh, quantum mechanics formulation or also and also with uh, uh, quantum gateways model we we use uh, we have to use the standard uh, notation for quantum mechanics so uh, the in the standard notation uh, 
uh, standard quantum mechanical notation uh, for a vector, we use this notation, which is uh, ket, and uh, psi here is the label for the vector. So this notation uh, uh, is used to indicate that uh, the object I is a vector. So this is uh, this is look like. Uh, this is look like the old notation for vector, for example, uh, we had to use to uh, use this uh, vector notation for uh, classical physics, for example, we had a vector psi, we use this, use, uh, this notation, but in quantum mechanics, we use uh, the cat notation instead of uh, this notation.